Okay. Looks like we're up. I just can't tell if we really are or not. We'll find out. Okay, I can see the people. Well, hey, Denise. Okay, this is working. After a fashion. I can't seem to flip my camera around. Let's see. How do we do that? Can we do that? I'm in a different app here. We'll just put it on me. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey, Carrie. Hey, Mary. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Pamela. All right. We're just using a different app. This should be streaming to several different uh, several different platforms today. I haven't really been able to do that remotely. I remember I tried a while ago, and it wasn't quite working. Hey, Dad. Good morning, everybody. We're just going to cruise around a little bit here while I wait for people to get online. Good morning, everybody. Using a whole different app now. This should be broadcasting to Twitch and YouTube, just like one of the regular ones. I can't see quite as well, but I don't have anything annoying about stars up here either, so that's nice. Facebook got the notification. That's good. This is kind of slow and clunky, but it's working. Going through a uh, safari, really. This person pass. None shall pass. He shall pass. Hey, Meg. Hey, Sherry. I was starting to drive out of the cemetery and head home so I could actually try to do a quick make up broadcast. Now the app is just not working. If you're not getting notifications, usually the best thing to do is hit uh, like when you're watching these things. And, you know, I've, I've tried all of the basic uh, troubleshooting. But every now and then it just does this. But it's good to know now that there is in fact a workaround here. So this is working. I picked one that I know is going to be very easy today. So I'm on a bit of a time crunch. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, Lorena. Sorry for the late start. Had to quick work. This is working a lot better than the last time I tried doing restream from my phone, which would have been about two years ago now. It's right around the time I got the axe from PayPal and Venmo. Today is Find a Grave Friday. For those of you new around here, Find a Grave Friday is where I go to a cemetery where I know a particular person is buried, but I do not look up where in the cemetery or what it looks like. This time, when I looked the guy up, immediately a picture of his mausoleum came up. So I know it's going to be a quick one, but that's kind of what I need. Hey, Liz. Boker Tov, Lisa, we'll give it just another minute or so while we cruise around. One thing I have figured out how to do on this app is switch my camera around. Let me see if I hit this button. Extra camera. Settings. Huh. There we go. That do it? Yeah, that did it. All right. <coughs> so you can all stop staring at me and I can now uh, pick my nose. But I right, said, so welcome to Rose Hill Cemetery, everybody. It's warming up outside the day. <coughs> this is interesting. I'm glad I know I can do this now so I can broadcast these uh, morning mini tours on YouTube, Twitch, etc. Twitter, for that matter. Hey, Cesare and Carolina in Poland. So, all right. Welcome along to Find a Grave Friday. Today's subject should be a pretty easy one. We're going to find a guy who was involved in one of the wildest mayoral disputes. Now, Joseph Medill from the Chicago Tribune became mayor after the Great Chicago Fire, but towards the end of his term, he suffered ill health. 
and made somebody else ask act somebody else acting mayor while he went over to Europe to recover. That guy did not get elected again. So the next mayor was a guy by the name of Harvey Colvin. That's who we're going to find today. Harvey Colvin. Became mayor uh, late 1873. But here's the thing. The city had pounced, uh, had pa- the state had passed a new like cities and villages ordinance, which redid local elections. But nobody was really sure whether that applied to the mayor or not. So in early 1876, neither the Republicans nor the Democrats in Chicago uh, acknowledged that there was an election. So a guy named Thomas Hoyne, namesake of Hoyne Street, not too far from here, in fact, it would intersect the cemetery just hopped on up and said, okay, I'll run. So he ran for mayor. Nobody else did. He got 97% of the vote. But nobody was really sure whether this election was legit or not. So he went to the uh, city hall, put up a sign that said mayor over the city council, uh, a councilman's office door, and just proceeded to act as though he was mayor, presiding over meetings and stuff, while Harvey Colvin refused to leave. Quite reasonably, I would say, since uh, they di- didn't really agree on whether there had really been an election or not. And eventually the council ruled that the, the election had been illegitimate. They had a special election a month later. Ne- ne- neither Colvin nor Hoyne either, even ran. But that's what we're going to find today. We're going to find Colvin. Section M? All right, this should be pretty quick. Mausoleum surrounded by air. Okay. What section is this? Here's section Q. Of course, we're working on cemetery numbering here, so Q, R. Logically, you'd think the next one would be C. Of course, that is logically. There's interesting. Pauline Swart, the Salvation Army, ward always for E Kingdom. Oh, the Salvation Army, a ward always for the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah, throw a nickel on a drum, save another drunken bum. Hallelujah, hallelujah, throw a nickel on the drum and you'll be saved. Section M towards the front gate, M is for mausoleum. Doing some Fritz Lang business here. I want to some music from old operas. Toward the front gate. Well, logically, I was going through a Q, R, etc. back over there, so M is probably going to be a little bit closer in. And now we're into the numbers. So mausoleum section N. This should be predictably easy. Now, the Chicago Tribune's account of the disputed month or so where nobody was going to agree on who the mayor was are very amusing to read. They'd give uh, speeches of some of Colvin's speeches and then say, our readers will surely be glad not to be given, not to be spared the rest of it. They really did not like Colvin one bit. The central theme of his reality, really, the thing they talked about the most was selling liquor on Sundays. He was for it. Others were against it. As a member of the International Orders of Bad Templars, I am also, of course, for it. Section M. Let's see what we got here. Now we've kind of circled back to Q. And below Q is L. Here's L again. That's all nice and logical. Is this also going to be Q? L edition. Okay, we found L and we found N. N is right ahead of us here. And this is P. Now, one would think that M must be around here if they didn't know anything about cemetery numbering.
And M, here we go. Right by Philetus Gates. Good friend to Seth Payne, the abolitionist wizard. And I only really see the one mausoleum up here. But hey, you know, this is right in the tour route. Right over here by Francis Pierce. And there we are. Why, this was a snap. Just as I needed it to be. Boy, did I pick a good few days to head to New York with a school group or what? We're at Rose Hill Cemetery, Arlene. Walking tour probably by the end of the next month. I'm thinking maybe the 23rd I'll get one listed. So here he is. Died in Florida, but they brought him back here. 1892. I'm glad I've looked him up. I know I must have walked by this a lot, but there's no first name on it, which makes it a little bit tricky. I like the weeping hinges here. Let's see if there's an open window or something. All right, yeah, he is in fact right about on the tour. Right over here, there's a guy who I think was involved in the trial. Yeah, this is the uh, mayor. Oh, yeah, John B. Rice, the mayor over here, who went from being an actor to being the mayor. Elected right after Lincoln's death, mainly because he was a member of Lincoln's same party. His origin story as an actor is one day he was just cobbling some shoes as a kid, but was singing to himself and somebody walked by, hey kid, you got a fresh sound. There's a Pointer Sisters version where they go all the way to 86. I must find this immediately. But all right, folks. Uh, so this was an uh, interesting experiment, getting to use a whole different app, which will broadcast to the others. I don't know how uh, stable it's been or anything. But if you have any comments on that, let me know. I got a lot of sitting around to do today. So... <laughs> Thanks for joining me, everybody. I'm Adam from Mysterious Chicago Tours. Thanks for helping me find this grave. I'll be joining you again in the next few days from all over the place. Having picked... Having picked uh, an ideal time to go to New York. So thanks, everybody. I'm Adam from Mysterious Chicago saying to stay safe and stay strong. And of course, if at all possible, stay spooky, everybody.